What is going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be preparing the RX-7 for streetcar takeover. I don't have a lot of stuff to do, but there is some things that I need to do. Well, basically just check and see if this is gonna fix my issue with the smoking on D-cell. Now, I know a lot of people were commenting in the video saying a whole lot of stuff, like it needs a restrictor and all kinds of stuff. Well, these turbos do have restrictors on them. Um, they are ones that I built. They like they're like homemade little restrictor plates that I built, but they do work really well. And then that got me to thinking, right? And I was talking to Wyatt. So I did add this catch can to it, right? And as you can see, the catch can does have these half inch lines. Now they do come from the stock half inch ports, right? But it does add length to it, so I imagine it probably does restrict them just a little bit. Now what I'm thinking is maybe that extra length in those lines caused a little bit of restriction, causing it to not get rid of all of the crankcase pressures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one extra bung on both valve covers that's bigger than half inch. I'm gonna add some three quarter inch bungs or even maybe some one inch bungs and then route them back into the catch can and see if that helps my smoking on D-cell. Hopefully that fixes that issue. I've got a couple other little things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hook up my steam ports on these heads. I ended up, like I crimped this and welded it shut, this little steam port right here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, route it back into one of these water pump spacers because it has a nice bung for it. That may help with it not getting super hot and uh, just help bleed it when I'm uh, cruising it around because right now it does have water in it and I have an issue with it getting too hot and it boiling some of the water out and then it just turns into obviously water vapor. But I'm gonna be taking these valve covers off. Should be a very simple thing. I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do and how I'm gonna baffle them and they should work great. Also, my friend Austin and his girlfriend are gonna be flying in tomorrow and my family is gonna be here tomorrow too. I'm gonna be getting some reaction videos of them riding in it. I know I've been rambling, but another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the boost control differently on uh, the Holly. So right now I have it on closed loop. So basically it's just a duty cycle and uh, it works, but at the same time, it's not super consistent. So what I'm gonna do is, it's super simple, I, I might show you guys, but basically Holly has this table where I can do map boost control. So the ECU will basically reference a table, right? I say, say it does at 50% on the boost controller, it does 10 PSI, right? Hypothetically, you basically plug that into the table and then instead of telling the ECU you want duty cycle, you just tell it what boost you want and then it references that table and what duty cycle you entered in. And it'll adjust the duty cycle to get whatever boost you want. So it just makes it more consistent. So I basically tell like, hey, I wanna leave on five pounds and then after five pounds, I want it to creep up to 10. Cause right now I think I have an issue with launching it with about five pounds and then trying to get the duty cycle high enough to where it doesn't drop down and boost and then come back up. I think that's what it's doing is it's dropping down and boost and then come back up. You can see it like the car will like hit from the launch and then drop for a second and then come back online. And I think that's what that is. So hopefully I get that figured out and uh, hopefully that helps the car launch a little bit better. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. It's been a long day already. It's finishing up some manifolds. Now time to work on the race car. As you can see, I've got the valve covers off. What's well, actually pretty crazy, right? So this valve cover over here, is the uh, driver side valve cover. And it just had a, a bung coming up off here, right? Well, so I had this little metal insert sleeve and I obviously drilled it out. But look at what came out of this thing. So this side didn't have any blow by like coming out of it and now I know why because check this out. Look at that tiny hole it allows for blow by. So, and that's why I was having all the blow by come out of the passenger side valve cover is because this one didn't have any type of weird restrictor like that. But this is actually really simple, so really simple solution. I didn't have to baffle it at all. I forgot that these things have a really long baffle in them. So I went ahead and just drilled a couple extra holes right in line where the uh, valve cover bolts are. So they're not in line with the rockers. Uh, so that way no oil like squirts up into it. I may get a little bit past it, but this is gonna be nuts. This is gonna be a huge difference. I'm gonna go from basically just one half inch fitting to two three quarter inch fittings on both sides. So I think that's gonna solve all of the smoking issues and blow by issues. I'm hoping once I weld those fittings on the valve covers, I'll go ahead and weld four fittings on that catch can so that way I can run all the lines to it. Super simple, super easy. This thing is probably gonna be a lot happier without all that crankcase pressure in it. Anyways, that should be a pretty quick fix. Gonna go ahead and uh, keep moving along. I did get all of the fittings welded on the valve covers. 
Got them all cleaned out really good. Got all the baffles in there cleaned out. And I did install everything, all the catch can lines. Now, it doesn't look the greatest because this is just three quarter inch heater hose. It's a little pinched right here, right against the fuel rail, but it'll still have a lot more flow than what it had before with two fittings on both valve covers. Obviously had to add these bungs to it. Put a new piece of scotch Brite in it. Hopefully this will solve my issue with uh, smoke on D-cell. I'm pretty positive it's gonna because before it was really restricted with just that one line. And I did go ahead and uh, flip my water pump spacer around. So now you can see I have a fitting here that goes up onto one of the steam ports over here. I'm hoping this fixes my issue with it uh, wanting to boil water out of it and not being able to get all the air pockets out of it. So I've made a lot of progress uh, recently and I didn't film any of it, but I just wanted to show you guys, I did get the battery all set up back here. It does have just a plastic box right now, but technically the track says that it just has to have a box and it just has to be vented to the outside, which how well that's actually an event, I'm not really sure. Let me show you guys the new bracket. So I made a basically a tray down here out of angle iron that holds the battery in really nice and tight and then bolted the tray down to the chassis of the car so it doesn't go anywhere anymore. You can pull on it pretty hard. It works really well. I got a smaller bar too so that way it doesn't get close to the terminals and arc out. I've got the switch back here. I did crack this a little bit too but you can't really see it but it should work really good. I'm gonna go ahead right now and move my trailer out of the way and back the arc 7 up and bleed the coolant in it, make sure it's all good. And then after that, I'm gonna go and do some pulls and see how the boost control is set up and see if I need to change anything in the little table on Holly. So next clip should be doing some pulls. All right, so really quick, before I end this video off, I've got Kyle with me. So me and my little co-pilot really quick. I'm gonna go test the table that I filled out for the boost control. I have it right now at five pounds, so hopefully it's referencing the table at 50% duty cycle, and hopefully at 50% on five pounds, it'll do about five pounds, hopefully, so go for a rip really quick down the street. It'll be my first time doing it. Yeah, it'll be your first time too. But it's, it's turned down, on five so pounds, yeah. though. It's not gonna be as rowdy. I got the laptop though, so we can turn it up if we want to. Just got back from testing the boost control setup on the car. Um, it did five pounds pretty good, and then I turned it up a little bit more to 18 pounds, and it only made about 11. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I might need to adjust it just a little bit. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Other than that, it's basically ready for streetcar takeover. I think tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, all of my family for a ride in it and get some reactions to that. It should be pretty good. They haven't rode in anything fast before, I think my mom is the only one that's rode in a turbo car before because I had my CRX back in Iowa when it made like 200 horsepower and she rode in it then and she thought it was super fast. So I can only imagine what this is gonna be like for all of them. I got my sister here, my grandpa here, my grandma, my mom, and my friend and his girlfriend and also my girlfriend and I'm gonna take them all for rides in it. Should be a really cool video so look out for that. Anyways guys, already for streetcar takeover, minus a little bit of boost control settings. I do get two passes guaranteed at streetcar takeover, so I'll get it figured out. But thank you guys for watching, and until next time guys, see ya.